Do you think the higher profit potentials of large U.S. companies in domestic markets will continue at the expense of foreign and new domestic competitors? Well, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to answer that because th these old dichotomies really don't exist anymore. We know that half of the revenues and half of the earnings of U.S. corporations come from non-U.S. sources. And uh, so we, you already have an international fund there. And the question, I mean, let, let's call it 50 percent. It's different. You don't have the same currency problems and all that, um, or currency value variations if you own foreign stocks. And by the way, I should say this. I don't know how many people know it, uh, but I, I want to have a chance to mention it. And as last year, uh, there is no question, I'm glad Mel didn't ask one, there's no question that gets asked more of me than why don't I favor international stocks. And I've explained it over and over and over again. And now when somebody asks it, I say, I hate that question. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well be honest. But last year, uh, this, this year that we're going through right now, uh, foreign stocks have done exactly the same, non-U.S. stocks have done exactly the same as U.S. stocks, up about 14%, until you get the weakness in the U.S. dollar, which has added 10% to those returns. So when you look at the international returns and non-U.S. returns, you will see 24%. But understand that those things are not fundamental in local currency terms, the way the markets are actually performing before you get into currency, is, um, is identical. So there are a lot of things that go into this. And I always thought currency risk was a, was a, a reason not to own international or non-U.S. funds. But I don't really object to it. And, but it's gotten to the point, I think the article was on CNBC maybe, Mike, the thing about my feelings on international. And it, it, oh, you didn't see that. Yeah, I was wondering. It's six pages, six pages <laughs> of um, explaining my international position. And it, you know, it's very logical. Could be wrong. I'm not saying that. You can always be wrong. Uh, but it points out that I don't tell you don't, don't need donum. You just be aware of these risks. A lot of the returns in the, the U.S. companies are already international companies. Um, that uh, currency risk is a big thing, that institutional kind of risk. And these are how these things change. I, I'm not allowed to get into politics, but the fact of the matter is we used to look at the United States as having the strongest institutions in the world, governmental institutions, court institutions, or, or, or other kinds of institutions that change our lives here for the better every day. And, uh, you know, the, gov the government institution is shaky today. Everybody knows that. Uh, I used to ask, have we lost one of the risks? Is our, will we lose the ability to govern ourselves? You know, I think you could argue that we're giving that a good shot. Um, but that's politics, so I won't pursue it.